been listening to me. All right. Good morning. It's 10 a.m. on Tuesday, October 13th, 2020, and this is 10 on Tuesdays. For today's episode, I'm joined by special guest Jackie Zach from Action Coach, and we're going to be discussing personal accountability. Don't turn us off. It's actually fun. And for those of you who are struggling to get others to cooperate, we have some insight on that too. I'm Holly Hoffman, founding partner and CEO of Sales and Income Tax Advisory Network. Prior to creating my company, I worked for the Wisconsin Department of Revenue as an auditor, head of the Speakers Bureau, and I was a sales tax specialist. My passion is to help provide sales tax education and support to tax professionals, businesses, and associations with the goal of building a network of empowered taxpayers. So for more information, visit salesandincometax.com. Thank you for joining my web chats, 10 on Tuesdays, every Tuesday from 10 to 10.30 a.m. You can check out previous episodes on my 10 on Tuesdays channel. To find my channel, go to salesandincometax.com and look for the 10 on Tuesdays logo. Click on the logo to register or click on watch previous episodes to access the 10 on Tuesdays channel. And then you can see all the previous episodes we've done. So now let me formally introduce my guest for today. I'm so excited. Jackie Zach of Action Coach. Oops, hang on. There we go. You guys see your beautiful face. I love um, I love uh, Jackie Zach. She's been an action coach for six years now. I wish I knew her for six years. I'd be in a different place right now. But um, I love Jackie's story because the more she tells me, the more I feel like um, we've got similar stories going on, similar experiences. Jackie left her accomplished career of 15 years in a Fortune 100 company to open her own business. And she actually signed her lease before she obtained financing. That sounds like something I would do. Um, but this was in 2008. And everyone on knows what happened in 2008. She got the lease and then the financial markets collapsed and no one was lending. Um, she did find a bank eventually to provide a loan but then she faced trying to get her business going during the economic crisis. I too left a nice and comfortable career to go out on my own and then COVID hit. This is life, right? Um, Jackie and I both had the same reaction to this adversity. Um, we decided to work on ourselves and our business by turning to Action Coach, actually. So thank you for joining us today, Jackie. I want you to, um, I love your story, okay? Um, I want you to share a little bit of your journey about opening your, you started an olive oil business and then how that right. led to working for Action Coach. Oh, excellent. Well, yeah. So in 2008, uh, just like you said, I signed my franchise agreement. I was the very first franchisee and it was an olive oil and balsamic vinegar uh, retail store. Uh <laughs> It was interesting because, again, I didn't have financing, but a, a bank that hadn't been in, in business for very long uh, took a chance on me and uh, it lent me some money. And lo and behold, I opened my doors in December of 2008. Um, one of the blessings, frankly, of opening um, during the, the middle of a crisis of any kind, whether it's by financial crisis or a pandemic, whatever it is, is that I had no previous history in my business. So I didn't know what to expect. And uh, so I was just like, okay, this must be how it's supposed to be. So I didn't have to that worry about, okay, it was this way last year. And this year it's this way. However, I would have people come running into my store saying, you're going to be here next year, right? And I would be like, of course, I'm going to be here. So <laughs> Uh, part of so that was part of it is I just I just I really I turned off all of the news I stopped listening to to any negative things um, about anything I really isolated myself so that I could focus on growing my business and I was in business for about five six years or six months I should say and I met an action coach at a chamber event hmm. and it was there that I realized you know what. I need to get this thing moving faster because I am single. I have no other source of income coming in. So I needed to move this along faster so that I could replace the income from my business, uh, from my other job uh, with the income from my business. And frankly, 
uh, that was the scary part, right? Is was I decided I was going to invest in myself and yep. make myself better so that I could make my business better. So I, I signed up uh, with Action Coach and my coach and I, we worked for, uh, I was a client for on and off for about six years. And I, they decided at some point that they were going to start to hire coaches. And he asked me, you know, is this something you'd be interested in? And I always thought it would be a great idea to <laughs> help other business owners the way that Action Coach helped me. And so I said yes. And he and I worked uh, on my business for the, the rest of the year to help get me out of the day to day. My store manager took over. Uh, we put systems into place. We put uh, key performance indicators and numbers in place so that I could uh, know how the business was doing even if I wasn't in the day-to-day. -day. She took over the day-to-day -day operation of the store. I became a coach. I owned the store for another four years uh, before I sold it to her. So now the owner of the store was one of my employees. And now she went from being a lunch lady at her kid's school to being a business owner. So it's a great story and it's about the circle, right? It's uh, all about um, Action Coach. What we talk about is um, th the definition of a business is a commercial profitable enterprise that works without you. And I'm living proof that it works uh, because I had the business working without me. I owned it for a couple more years. I was able to sell it and uh, I'm still able to now help other business owners do the same. So that's kind of, I've come full circle in my own business. So I have been on, on your side of the desk in terms of as business owners. And I now can um, help business owners as they grow and uh, create something spectacular. So. Yes. That's my story. It gives me hope. Um, I <laughs> I similarly turned to action coach, but I I'm very good at self-reflecting. Doesn't mean I get over my mental blocks, but I know what I'm not good at. And you know, I sales and marketing and focus can be an issue with me. So that's what I'm specifically um, having you help me with, but also the just the the numbers and and making sure that I'm moving forward in a profitable manner. So it's it's been really good so far. So one of the things, speaking of which, so we have these things that Action Coach talks about: their BFOs, blinding flashes of the obvious, and I kind of laughed when I first heard it and I thought, oh, yeah, okay, that's a good catchphrase or whatever. But one of the first um, meetings that I went to, um, I believe it was Corey, one of the coaches, was talking about mirroring and personal accountability. And we're going to be talking about both those today. But the whole mirroring thing was this BFO for me because, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna have you explain it, but as I was hearing, maybe I'm gonna have you explain what mirroring is, and then sure. I will I will be honest and open with my friends listening today about how that applies to me. So go ahead and explain to those listening what mirroring is. Sure. So, so, it, and, you know, and just as, as you were talking, Holly, you're going to be honest and open. My guess is everybody out there listening has some form of something they're saying to themselves or something that they're doing um, that is holding them back. So the nice thing is as a group, we are not alone. Um, I even have some things that I'm working on as well. So life is a mirror. And what does that mean? Um, so, uh, and I'm going to put it in terms of sales because uh, that's a see marketing and sales is a big thing for people. A lot of people don't know how to do it and are uncomfortable doing it. They know how to do the thing that they do best. But when it comes to owning your business and doing sales and marketing, a lot of people struggle with that. So let's just talk about it in terms. I will tell you my story. Uh, life is a mirror. So when I am when I was struggling especially at the beginning of my coaching career with the sales and marketing aspect of my um, 
beginning career, all of a sudden, what I would find is the things that I was having problems with, whether it be um, something I'm thinking in my head about myself, if I'm having trouble with sales, if I'm struggling, whatever I'm struggling with, it's reflected back to me through my clients. Mm -hmm. And this can be, and this can be uh, work at home too. So if if something is you're you're worried about something or you're not confident about something, it's reflected back to you, either through your family or it's reflected back at you through your clients. So if you're having trouble, as an example, getting sales, something you're doing is reflecting back at you. Um, yeah. So that is what, what we mean when we talk about life as a mirror. So as we find that, oh, you know, it seems like a coincidence, this is happening. Well, that's because something you're thinking, doing, saying is reflecting back to you. So pay attention to those things. And I'd love it if, Holly, if you'd just share your story around that. So I do have business examples, but um, as I was listening to Corey explain mirroring, I just, well, I was in my home listening. So I'm in my home looking around my home and I'm listening and I'm thinking, oh my God, I've been so stressed out. I do so much in my, in my family home and taking care of the house and the bills and all that stuff. And I always harp on the kids and get so frustrated with my husband and kids. You know, if everyone pitched in and did a little, and then I started thinking about the stuff that I asked them to do, um, pick up their laundry, put the plates in the kitchen, things like that. I was like, oh my gosh, I think because I'm the one who does it, if I leave my stuff, sometimes it's okay. So I'm setting the standard for them and I'm like, oh my God, I'm doing the exact same thing they're doing. And you know what? I instantly, the anger and the frustration with it went away. I knew exactly what I needed to do um, or deal with that they're doing the same thing that I do. But I've used that in my business as well. Sometimes it's just this click of realization so you understand what you're doing. I would be like, how come people aren't getting back to my emails? How, oh my God, I think everyone in business deals with this. How come people aren't getting back to my emails? And then I thought, well, you know, I hear these sales pitches and stuff and I'm like, because I'm not asking them to get back to me. So when I ask guests to come on, like Jackie, um, I send out my initial email and then my next email a week later is, um, what date are we going to book? And I give them two dates. And I know that mm -hmm. sounds silly and whatever, but because I am like down to business and doing what I want them to do, like let's pick a date, They it works. It works <laughs> every time. I am not joking. Every time it works. <laughs> I immediately get a response. Even if it's, I can't do that date, but how about this date? Fine. Let's put it on the calendar. Let's go. Right. So isn't that funny how it's subtle and you don't recognize it, but once you become aware that that that's happening or, or what your own behavior is like and what you're doing, it's amazing once you go to change that, what the, the um, effect is and the result is. But you're right. The second you may, you recognize it, you made a change and all of a sudden you started to get the result you were looking for. Isn't so that we were, interesting how that Yes. <laughs> so we were talking about, and I think this is important to discuss because I know a lot of my clients are dealing with this right now. And um, you were talking about how some of your clients were also talking about there's a new wave of panic with the pandemic yep. um, that businesses are facing and people are starting to get nervous and anxious and worried and and I'm glad you said something because I'm noticing the same thing too and I was already thinking how do I respond to this how do I help people I've already changed changed some of the things that I do but um apply mirroring a little bit to that new panic business mm -hmm. owners are facing right so when you, when life is a mirror so basically if you're panicked 
if you're worried about what's going to happen after the election, uh, the COVID numbers are rising, there isn't enough people. And if you're worried about that, and that is what you are projecting out into the world, that is what you will get back. It's, it's weird how it works, but it's true. So if that is something that is is uh, you're starting to feel, the the or you have been feeling, and you've noticed lots of other people are feeling that too, and are coming, and, and you guys are talking about it, and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Now's the time to stop that in its tracks, and change the way you're thinking. So part of part of everything that we do starts with what we're thinking. If we think, you know what, we're gonna plow right through, that's the first step to getting mm -hmm. to the other side. If we think, oh my God, what's gonna happen? I'm, I'm not gonna get any business and business, I'm not gonna sell another thing. That's exactly what's gonna happen because that's what you're, you're, you're projecting out there. So it's weird how it works and I would love to tell you how it works. I have no idea, but I do know that when that, when, when I, especially in my own personal situation, when I stop doing those kinds of things, all of a sudden I, things change for me. So you know, what I'd I like think, to share. Oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was going to say um, another way that the mirroring works, and this is probably something that everyone on here can relate to. Um, how often have you worked in a, a negative office environment or you have to work with another team and it gets real negative and blamey and um, I didn't know I was using the mirroring technique at the time but this also works every time. You reset, you personally just mm -hmm. throw away those negative feelings and you're like, nope, these are good people. I'm gonna work with them regardless of what, <laughs> what you think. And you go in with, how can I help you? This is, this is what yes. I need. You know what you need. How can I help you to give you, give me what I need and every time it melts people, um, you start getting the results you want. And then mm -hmm. you celebrate that, hey, we did this together and yeah. you're so excited. And I'm telling you that's mirroring and it works every time also, no matter how negative it gets. Right. And I would recommend it for anybody, if you feel that that's, those are some of the things that are happening, try changing what you're thinking. And I'm going to help you help everybody get it. We're going to talk a little bit about how to start to do that today. Um, uh, really, it's about if you change, because a lot of times what I used to think is, well, that other person needs to change, right? Um, but it all really starts with me or with you. You once I started to change my behavior and my thinking, other people started to change. So if I'm the one who wants to see the change, then I need to be the change and start oh. reflecting that back to everyone. Yep. You have control of yes. the presentation. Yes, you, do. you do. All right. All right. So let's talk a little bit about, oops. Is that working? Oh, there yep. we go. So it's just a little slow on my end. So this is what we call the point of power. So when you want to start to, you have choices. And when, when, when we feel like lots of stuff, stuff is happening to us and we have no choice, we really do have choices about a couple of things. You have choices about how you think. You have choices about how you act and you have choices about how you react. So if you think about this point of power as what's happening right now, and now is the, my opportunity to make a choice. So uh, we have a lot of, there's a lot of anger in the world. There's a lot of uh, fear around COVID. There's a, a fear around what's happening next and what's going on in the future. We have a, an opportunity to choose not to be afraid um, and, we, and to think as if it, that we're not afraid. 
to act as if not we're not afraid, to react in a positive manner. So we have that choice. We may not have choices about what's happening to us, but we do have choices around those three things. Mm -hmm. So the point of power is really about what's happening now and what choice are you going to make? So we can go below the point, what we call below the point of power into we can blame people or things or situations. We can make excuses or as adults, we like to call them reasons why something didn't happen or you didn't do something or it turned out that way or be in denial about what's happening. Uh, really talking about, let's talk about employees for an example with regard to denial. Uh, you have an employee who doesn't fit the culture, uh, who isn't doing what they want to do, they're not following the systems in your company, and we're in denial about the effect of that on the rest of the team. Because mm -hmm. if we're in denial about that, it's affecting your team. If you have somebody who's consistently not following the systems, who's, who's maybe their attitude is bad, uh, they are going rogue for whatever reason, uh, we're in denial about the effect of that on the rest of our employees. So we could be blaming them, we could be make excuses for them, but we're certainly in denial about that. When we if you notice the acronym is bed when you lay in bed and don't move and don't do anything don't take any action but doing those kinds of things we're really living in the past so if the point of power is what's happening right now is what it which is the present blame excuses and denial are all about the past because you can't blame someone without something having already happened or something right we can't make excuses or reasons unless something has already happened. We can't be in denial about something or someone unless uh, something has already happened. But what we can do on the flip side, we can take ownership, accountability, and responsibility for our businesses or our role in a business. So if you're a business owner, it's ultimately you taking ownership, accountability, responsibility for the results in your business. If you are a member of a team, um, it's your responsibility to take ownership, accountability, and responsibility for your role in the success of you and your company. And when we take ownership, accountability, and responsibility, we're really talking about, all right, here's what happened. Here's what should have happened. Here's what, you know, this is what we're going to do to fix it and move forward. So it's really about being powerful, learning from whatever's happened and moving forward. This is a great thing also to use with your families. You think about teenagers, right? Or even ourselves. Right. If 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 you enough in your family, if everybody's blaming, making excuses and in denial about something, and all of a sudden, slowly but surely, everybody takes ownership for their role in the family, everybody's accountable for their part and responsible for their part, what difference would that make in working together and in working with your team or your family and in the culture and the feel of being part of that group? So that it's all about take being powerful in that sense. Can I share an example? So really, you absolutely can. I love it. Okay. So one of my clients um is you know, this new wave, this different thing that's hitting with the pandemic. It's cold and flu season, but also um a lot of people are getting COVID right now. Doesn't mean they're down and out or um that they're gonna be lost, but there are certain protocol that you have to follow. So this company is not super small, but small enough. And they're short on people everywhere um, mm -hmm. in the field and in the office. And uh, the main accounting person is not the owner. She doesn't make the decisions. So mm -hmm. she could say, I'm powerless. I can't do anything. Mm -hmm. um, but She's been working really long hours and she's, you know, covering for other people's positions of people who are out. 
And you could tell she was being run ragged, working till midnight. I'm sure people can relate. Instead of working below the point of power and just saying, oh, there's nothing I can do about it. My, you know, this stinks. I can't deal with this. She told me, I'm thinking outside the box. What can we do? If I need time to get my job done, let's rely on the answering service to answer calls during the day, during the week. Um, mm -hmm. Good solution. I mean, you know, if you're, if you're short, you're short, and that might be a viable option. Um, she looked at other solutions. She turned to me and she said, could you help us cover and do some accounting work for us, do some data entry work for us, to get us through, would that be an option? She goes, I'm thinking outside the box, anything is an option. What can I do to help the company move forward and not all be on my shoulders? And then she presented that to the owner um, as different options. So she went to point of power um, and moving forward in a powerful manner rather than just being like caught. <laughs> And negative right exactly so what what how can you out there really take ownership accountability and responsibility that is a perfect example right she she here's the situation here's what i have to work with and what can i do i think outside the box maybe just focus on the most important things until things people come back after they've been out whatever that is but it's taking the bull by the horns as they used to say and um moving forward versus spending a lot of time um blaming blaming what the situation or making excuses right mm -hmm. and so she plowed through is everything perfect no but is it better a lot mm -hmm. better than if she would have spent a lot of time below the point of power Right. So this point of power thing, and it starts with us. It starts with us. So all of you listening, it starts with you, right? How can you take ownership, accountability, and responsibility? And and as things are happening, by doing though that, you you feel more powerful. You feel like you have more control. Yep. Because um, when we're down in 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 blame, excuses, and denial, it feels like it's out of control. Yeah, so occasionally so I, I told Jackie that I need a slap to get out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> but the the point is, if you recognize that this is the cycle, and this happens to everyone, the shorter time you spend below, you know, it's okay to have your meltdown and then move forward, but the shorter time you spend below, um, the better. Yes. Yes, and the more you take the reins and move forward, because there's always a solution. It may not yeah. be the perfect solution, but there's always a way forward, right. no matter what happens. There's always a way forward. So it's a man. Um, uh, the first step is to get your head in the right space to recognize the way forward, and then take actions to make sure you're you're going forward. Because you know we are not think about it, coach. We're action coach, and so we're all about taking actions to move forward. Yes. So those were the main points that I wanted to share um, that I asked Jackie to talk about. But it doesn't mean that there aren't um, sales formulas and all sorts of other really good business stuff. Um, I mean, this is good business stuff, but it's like within you, um, you need to master this in addition to um, the basic sales and marketing stuff. But oh my God, you guys are amazing. So thank you. I wanted to talk, talk about what you're offering people here. Um, there we go. Yeah, so, oops. Yep, it's back. Oops. Don't change it. Okay. I will. <laughs> Sorry. That's um, okay. Uh, uh, what, so if this sounds like you or you have, oh, if you've ever wanted to talk over something that's happening in your business with a coach, what I'm offering is a complimentary strategy session for your, your business. It'd be 20, 30 minutes uh, where you can sit down, ask me anything you want, and um, I will tell you what I would do if it was my business. If 
we find that a longer conversation is necessary, then we would schedule that then. But if you are interested in talking with a coach, namely me, about anything in your business, even where your head's at, sales and market, anything at all with regard to your business, I'm offering that to anybody listening, whether you're a business owner or even if you're a salesperson or you're, you're an employee at a business, Anybody on here can take advantage of it. All you have to do is email me at JackieZach at ActionCoach.com. My cell phone number is 414-698-8632. Again, my email is JackieZach at ActionCoach.com or my phone number 4698-8632. And it's who wouldn't take advantage of 20 to 30 minutes of if you have maybe it's a member on the team or you're the member of the team that's the problem <laughs> sometimes you need someone to talk to to um figure out what you're going to do what your next step is and if you can get that for free that's priceless so i encourage you to consider to reach out to jackie as a resource thanks jackie for taking time i know your schedule is busy and things are going crazy right now. So I appreciate you joining us and sharing yeah, your story. Thank you so much. Next week, we have Aaron Bakken from the Franchise Consulting Company, and I'm excited to talk to him. Um, he owns actually three companies, and his Franchise Consulting Company not only helps you uh, figure out how to take your company to make it a franchise, but also if you're looking to expand and invest, um, you might be interested in purchasing a franchise, something that's ready-made, ready to go. Um, and he knows how to match you up with that, but I'm excited to talk to him more about the idea of franchising and, and how that all works. And then the week after that is Tracy Champagne. Um, she's with Small Business Milwaukee. Uh, she does website development and uh, a lot of networking and I'm excited to talk to her. Web presence is more important than ever during the pandemic and uh, networking, uh, not in person, is becoming crucial. So I'm looking forward to talking to her about that. November 3rd, I have Mike Griffin, CFO of JP Cullen. He's gonna come on and talk about purchasing trends in the construction industry. And uh, there's a lot of stuff changing with that and a lot going on. So I'm excited to hear about that. Um, November 10th is the Tuesday after the elections. Brad Boykes from the Wisconsin Builders Association is going to be on. And we're going to be talking about the results of the election and impact on the construction and builders industries. Uh, November 17th is... I'm having two guests on from Avalara. Avalara is a certified service provider. Uh, they uh, provide multi-state and international uh, sales and VAT tax services. Scott Peterson actually is the government liaison for Avalara and he used to be the head of the Streamlined Sales Tax Governing Board. Um, Craig Johnson took over after Scott Peterson left for Avalara. Chad Paulson, um, used to work for Minnesota DOR. Chad and I have similar backgrounds. Um, so it'll be interesting to talk to Scott and Chad. A lot of people don't understand how the certified service providers work and multi-state issues. And I just thought the more education I can get out there about it, the better for everybody. So that's going to be a really important one, November 17th. Um, December 15th, I have Craig Johnson coming back on. Uh, Streamline Sales Tax Governing Board. He said that he will have some new announcements for everyone uh, that Streamline is rolling out. So that will be an important show also. Secretary Peter Barca has agreed to come on from the Wisconsin Department of Revenue and we're just uh, choosing a date. So he will be on end of November or sometime in December. And that'll be an interesting conversation as well. I'm excited to talk to Secretary Barca. So look for more upcoming guests. That's what we have booked right now. So make sure you mark your calendars if any of those guests uh, are specifically important to you. But I say join for all of them because you'll learn something with everyone. So thank you for joining me. If you miss an episode, 
you remember you can watch previous episodes by clicking below the 10 on Tuesdays icon on salesandincometax.com. Thank you, everybody. Have a good week. See you next week with Aaron Bakken.